So in this video, we're going to learn how to use checkboxes for data validation and also how to create something more user interactive. So right now, what we have here is this data set. And on top, we have this little summary of our data set. So by default, we have the total for each region in our data set. And the way this is going to work, if we click on the checkbox here on the right, it's going to add it to the grand total and it's going to highlight that in our data set. Now, if I check Western, that will add it to the grand total as well. And you can see how Western is highlighted. We can also check any other box. So if I check all the boxes, it's going to add all of them to our total and everything is going to be colored. So basically it's a nice way for us to visually see what exactly we're adding up together as we're checking the boxes. And it's, I guess, more user interactive. Let's get going. Here's our data set and checkboxes are a part of data validation. So if I click in a cell, go under data and data validation and choose a criteria, I can switch it to checkbox and hit save. And that's going to add a checkbox. Now you can check it or uncheck it. Now let's see, actually I'm gonna undo this. I wanna show you something. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do data validation and switch it to checkbox. So let's see what's the value in that box. So I'm gonna go here and do equal sign and click on that box, hit enter. So you can see right now it's blank. There's nothing in there. If I check the box, it's true. If I uncheck the box, it's false. So the initial state, if you never clicked on the box, it's going to be just blank. But once you check that it's true and uncheck that it's false. All right, so let's keep that in mind because we're going to need this. So let's try to just get a clean list of our regions. I'm just going to copy and paste this here. So I could just type all those names, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to use unique function and I just need a clean list out of all of these regions. So I'll just do this, hit enter. And that gives me a clean list. Now I can just take this and copy and paste values only. So now there are no formulas left here. It's just clean cells. So here I want to have my checkboxes and total values for each one of those regions. So I'll probably have checkboxes over here and have totals over here. So I'll just type total sales. Here we'll have our checkboxes. So I'm going to select that area, data, data validation, and switch this to checkbox, hit save. So now I want to get my total for Midwestern. So I'm going to do equals and I'll do some ifs. We'll do our sum range. So our sum range is going to be the sales values. I'm going to remove the end row reference. So it keeps going all the way down, comma. Criteria range in this is going to be the region. So I'm going to, again, select this, remove the row reference, comma again. And in this region uh, criteria range, I want to check if it's Midwestern where I'm going to click on the cell to the left. So I'm going to close this, hit enter. That should give me Midwestern total. Let's actually just format this as currency. So that gives me the number. Now I want to be able to copy this formula down, which means I'm going to have to lock my ranges. So F4 to lock this range and highlight this range. F4, I'm not going to lock this because I want to move to the next region. Hit enter. So that gives me this. So now I should be able to copy this down and get the total for each one of those regions. So, so far so good. I'm going to delete that. Now, the thing is, I want this number to only show up if this box is checked. So I'll cut this formula, control X. And what I will do, I will start with an if function and I will say if this and this box, remember it's either going to be blank or it's going to be 
true or false. So if true, comma, then I'm going to paste my formula, comma. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. Close parentheses, hit enter. So now it gives me zero. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. And if I check this box, see, we get the total. Uncheck that box. We don't get our total. Uh, I should be able to just now copy this down and we should be able to make this work by simply checking our boxes. So now we can also do our grand total and say our grand total should be the sum of those. Perfect. And we can modify that by obviously if we uncheck some boxes, it's just going to give us the total of those. So another option to do this, you might want to actually have the numbers display for each region all the time and just add them up in the total when the boxes are checked. So let's create that. So I'm going to go back here and remove this if function. So I'm going back to where I was in the beginning where I did the sum ifs and I'm going to copy it down. So that gives me the total for each region and now it's not really connected to the checkbox. If we uncheck, nothing happens. So what we want to happen when we check this box is we want this total to update to just the total of the boxes that are checked. And I'm going to do that by switching the sum function to a sum ifs function. So the sum range now is going to be all of these comma, criteria range is going to be the range of my checkboxes, which should match the sum range, comma. And in that criteria range, we need to make sure that the box is checked. So that means when it's checked, it's going to actually be true. So I'm going to type true, close parentheses, hit enter. So right now I'm getting a zero because none of the boxes are checked. But if we go now and start checking some boxes, let's format this. It's going to add it to our grand total. I want to add another piece of functionality for this. I'm actually going to also format this the same. So it looks like this. Next piece I want to add to this whole thing is when I check the box for Midwestern, I want to highlight all Midwestern here so we know which ones are being actually totaled. So we're going to apply some conditional formatting based on the checkbox that's checked or not. Now, how is this going to work? So to do this, I'm going to actually create a helper formula first to explain you how this is going to work. And then we'll use that helper formula to actually get this done. So I'm going to go here next to my data set and create a logical test. And my logical test is going to be, well, right now, pretty simple. If this is Midwestern, which is this equals this cell, then we're going to say true. So I'm going to say equals. I'm going to check if this equals this, then it's going to say true, right? Now, I want to be able to drag this down and I want to keep referring to this cell. So that means I'm going to lock that C2 with F4. Hit enter. So that equals to Midwestern. So it's true. If I drag this down a little bit, you'll see that the ones that are Midwestern are saying true. The ones that are not will say false. So this is just telling us true or false for Midwestern, which we could use for conditional formatting. But right now, it's really not connected to our checkbox at all. So if I uncheck this, see, it doesn't really affect whether it's true or false. So to do that, I'm going to go back here and cut the formula here and I'm going to use if function. I'm going to say if this cell and we should check if it's true and we know when it's checked it's going to be true. So I'm just going to leave it at that and I'm going to lock that cell comma. So basically if that cell is true, we need that formula. I'm going to paste my formula comma. I don't want any conditional formatting if that box isn't checked. So I'm going to just type false. So otherwise, it's just going to say false. 
I'm going to close it, hit enter. So what is this going to do? So right now, if I drag this down, you'll see that nothing has changed. It's still saying true, false, the same way it used to. But if I uncheck this box, see, now we're back to all falses. If I check the box, Midwesterns will become true. So now we have this true false formula, which is this, and we want to make sure that this is locked and this is locked, which are the cells here disconnected on top. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that formula, hit escape. And now let's use it for conditional formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and click here, control shift down and control shift down again. That highlights that column and I'll go format conditional formatting and we need to add our formula. So now I'm going to go here, scroll down until I find custom formula is, and I'm going to paste my formula and decide what formatting this is going to be. I'll just choose this color done. Close this control up, up. So you can see how all Midwesterns are currently colored. But if I uncheck the box, see the coloring is gone. I check the box, it's back. Now I also have to do this for my other regions. And the formula is largely going to be the same, only we have to refer to the correct cells that are below. So this one instead of E2, so this locked cells are the ones, E2 should be E3 and C2 should be C3. And the rest of the formula is going to be the same. So if I copy this down, see it all says false because right now we're checking the second one. So we have to check the box. So you can see how we get the appropriate values through here, through here. Perfect. So we'll have to just go back here, copy our formula and apply conditional formatting one more time. So in the same range, control shift down, down, format, conditional formatting. This is our old rule. We're going to add another one. And custom formula is paste. And then we'll choose a different color. So green, I guess is fine. Done. I'm going to add a new rule and from now on I can do my changes here. Custom formula is paste. Now E3 now is going to be E4 and C3 is going to be C4. And you can choose your formatting. So I'll choose that. And I think we had one more. So add new rule. Custom formula is. So E5 and C5 to do the last region. And I guess for this, I'm going to have to choose a different background. Not the font. There we go. Done. So I think that should be enough. Let's go back and check. Yeah, four. So right now, if I unchecked all the boxes, See, all of the cells are back to default formatting. We don't really need, by the way, this formulas over here. I'm going to delete that. So none of our boxes are checked. The grand total is zero and nothing is highlighted. If I check Western, see, we get the total for Western. And if I keep scrolling down, you'll see all Westerns are selected to that color. If I do Southern, well, nothing here on the screen, but there it is. One, two, three, all highlighted. If we check Midwestern, that will highlight all Midwestern, and this should highlight all of it. And now we have a way to actually see what we're adding up visually on the screen by using conditional formatting. If you're interested in highlighting the entire row with that color instead of just highlighting that one cell, you could do that too. I actually have a video about conditional formatting that highlights the entire row. Watch that to see how you can apply that. But this is good for this. So we have these and these are checkboxes. So we have this user interactive way to get our totals and see the results on the screen. So that should do it. And now there are really too many ways you can use this in practice. And really, if you just think about this, this is basically just true 
and blank or false for the rest, you should be able to apply that in your formulas. Very similar to the way how we did the grand total in the sum ifs, when we sum up if those values are true. Another cool way to use this is using filter function. So if I do equals filter and open parentheses, and I take this range, comma, and as a condition, I'm gonna use this range of checkboxes. Close that, hit enter. And what you'll see, it's only gonna get me the boxes that are checked. So if I check this one, so it adds it to the list. If I uncheck, it removes it from the list. So you can use the filter function to actually have an interactive range based on what's checked. Well, that's kind of cool. You could also create some sort of to-do lists with items here and check boxes and you can see how many items were complete by adding every box that's checked. And an easy way to do that, since these are trues and falses, if we do some of these boxes, we're really not gonna get anything, it's zero. But if we do some product instead of some, some product will basically just interpret trues as ones and the rest false is gonna be zero or the blank is gonna be zero. So as a result, this should be the total number of boxes that are checked. So let's make it plain. So there are two boxes checked, three boxes checked, four boxes checked, right? If I uncheck everything, it should be zero boxes checked. So one last thing I wanted to mention is by default, the value of the checkbox is true or it's false, right? So if it's checked, it's true. If it's unchecked, it's false. However, you can modify that behavior. If I do this, highlight this, go under data validation and switch to checkbox, I can do this use custom cell values. And instead of true, I can say, let's say yes. And instead of unchecked, I'm gonna say no. So if I hit save, now we have our checkboxes. And what's gonna happen now, if I check what's the value of that checkbox, I'm gonna do equals this. Again, it's gonna be blank as an initial state. If I check the box, now it's yes. If I uncheck it, it's no. So then it's yes or no, and you could use that value in your formula or function to do whatever you have to do. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.